are talking about the fact if uh, an ICO is an IPO. And uh, it has a very common aspect to the fact that you create a DAO, which could be like LLC, and then you create your token, that could be a new blockchain or based on Ethereum ERC20 tokens. And then you sell your tokens in exchange of money, right? So the process is very similar to an IPO, but the mentality is very different because when you think about an ICO, it's about if you're like investing into uh, Harvard Connection when Mark Zuckerberg was still in his dorm, okay? So from that moment, 2005 to Facebook today, if you invested $100 in, in Harvard Connection to Facebook, you would probably have made $100 million. So it'd be like 1 million times. Uh, but the chance of, 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 of finding that Facebook is very difficult as well. So, you know, you have obviously higher risks and uh, it, it just has to be taken into consideration that, you know, a lot of these ICOs are, are going are gonna to unfortunately go belly flop and will probably die. But some of them will go a thousand percent like Ethereum and different ones or Omize has done recently times 30 then did very well. So uh, I think so. It, it it will eventually replace IPOs if the regulators are allowed to do so. And it's just it's an earlier stage though than an IPO because it's not exactly as an IPO. IPO is you go through seeding, Series A, B, C, D, and then you go through pre-IPO. So you know the chances of investing and making a return out of IPO are more for the bigger elephants, bigger whales, where the ICO is for the really uh, small, small um, early stage projects. So it's not exactly the same. There's a very good point. I think so what we have to understand about blockchain and cryptocurrency in general is that the old model of doing business doesn't work that much anymore. People are a little bit fed up of the fact that the Fed could print 10 trillion dollars within five years and you know just everyone would be okay about that because they they're able in some way to manipulate the markets and another way as well is that how come IPOs like Alibaba in 2007 or 8 the first IPO how come I could not participate with that I tried I called all the brokers I had even though back then I was working in banking industry I couldn't take part of it I think so that's unfair uh, I think so uh, people got fed up of, of having money given only to wealthy people that wealthy people can only get wealthy I think so everyone should be allowed to be get wealthy you know to get money out of any deal you should really be based on a meritocratic system and that's what blockchain is really targeting uh, on and and a lot of different ICOs it's about that and that's I think so what blockchain in general is that okay we don't want to favor one person we want to favor a community that together with a swarm intelligence you're really able to do one plus one plus one equals six or seven and not just one plus one equals two and we just want to work with our friends and we want to have this nepotic type of, uh, of, of, of society where only few people have the information. ICO is about aligning everyone on the same level. It has this utopist investment idea behind it where yeah, everything should be built on a community and anyone could be a member of this community if he contributes to that, to that community. I think so that's very important. We are seeing more and more ICOs. Uh, back in the beginning of the year, there was maybe, let's say, you know, uh, one per month ICO, and then we got to March, maybe two ICOs, and now we're seeing 100 ICOs. And that doesn't make sense at all, because there's a lot of business that are not decentralized. They're not using the power, the philosophy of blockchain. So not every startup could, could do an ICO. Potentially it could, but it wouldn't make sense. Today, if you want to valor and make sure that ICO does make sense, you look at their business model. There's a lot of these different ICOs, you don't even understand it. Second, you have to understand if it's decentralized. If it's decentralized and it's using blockchain technology and philosophy with it, it makes sense. The third thing you have to make sure is that it's not a scam. And for that, you have to look at the team, if it has, you know, uh, it has in some way uh, has a track record in the blockchain community. It has as well, you know, a good board advisor. That's very important. And then you have to make sure that they have different service providers that you know work well with them. The good partners that've been experienced ICOs. And I think so. 
that's something to consider because right now we're seeing you know way too many ICOs going on and in the next four months I'm sure you know we're gonna have like 500 per month and it'll be even harder to, to find which are the good ICOs and which are the bad ICOs. So we really if we recommend startups to really look at blockchain, uh, again, in terms of technology and philosophy. If someone thinks that you could have your business decentralized and bringing in this swarm intelligence, bringing different uh, community actors within your own business, then you could, you could start saying, okay, maybe this could be better, like, right? But if tomorrow you're, 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 you're setting up a pizzeria or something like that, it wouldn't make sense to make an ICO. Um, I think so really you have to you have to think about your business and 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 really try to remodel your business model and and blockchain is it and when buying saying blockchain is it it means really decentralize it uh, or tokenize it uh, that's another thing that you know like we're doing very much is that a lot of different business in the real estate investments let's say the commodity uh, and the diamonds whatsoever there's a lot of different arts there's a lot of different business that uh, are illiquid investments and through blockchain you could tokenize these different businesses and by doing so offer a, a much better liquidity terms and obviously make a new business out of it. Uh, if you're in the fintech business, there's very high chances that for, uh, we would strongly recommend you to, to contact uh, Swiss Fintech Association. Uh, a lot of the members over there have uh, extensive experience in blockchain and see if you could revamp a bit your business model and add to it uh, the blockchain. For example, us. Um, Swissborg was a B2B cyber advisor. And we really understood that cryptocurrency was an asset class. More than that, uh, we start doing different portfolio, uh, crypto, cryptocurrency portfolios. And we realized that uh, blockchain was not only about an asset class, but there was a technology behind it. And the technology behind it, uh, behind the smart contract, would enable, enable us to have utilize the smart contract as an investment fund or investment vehicle. So then we're like, okay, it's an asset class, it's as well, uh, it could be an investment vehicle, so we could set up customized investment vehicles that we're, we're previously doing. Going forward, we looked at the business saying, okay, we don't need any more counterparties right now because we could set up our own fund. We don't need an auditor, we don't need an administrator, we don't need uh, different uh, prime brokers, we don't, need, we don't need, we have less and less intermediaries in our step, which is giving a, a total expense ratio even, even uh, less expensive. So we started to say, okay, this is very interesting. And then going forward, we understood that you could have, you could build an investment management platform, which could be based on a meritocratic system, and that you could have a decentralized investment management platform by bringing in different investment managers. So that's why, for example, SwissBar, we went from a robo-advisory model to more investment management platform, which is block powered by blockchain with its philosophy and its technology. And then we said, okay, let's go a little step even further because we'll have more assets by raising an ICO. So we'll go for the Swiss Cyber Bank. So I think so that's, that's a natural step, organic step that we took by embracing blockchain.